to the meat. Yeah, the meat. Uh, as we said in the intro, today's meat is very, very exciting. It's all about pet plates and sponsored by Croda slash Sodarma. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Cool. Um, so, <laughs> so I was about to say, thank you. We can buy Pacifico now. <laughs> <laughs> Sodarma's going to be like, cut, 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 cut. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so yeah, um, we definitely wanted to. Al- we always wanted to do a deep dive of this topic, mm-hmm. but without um, kind of having that industry insider knowledge, yeah. it is a bit more difficult for us to, you know, kind of share uh, more definitive findings. Uh, we get so many questions on all the peptides you guys have found in your products. It is an incredibly wide category and it can be very confusing. It's even for us can be um, difficult to really decode and understand which peptide is which. Um, So uh, I think one of the things that you guys probably most know peptides for is anti-aging. And yes, Crota and Sederma are big time players in that category. So, um, but, but before we get into the skin concern side, um, let's just start with the basics. What is a peptide? And why is a peptide so confusing? Yeah, so um, before we get into peptides, we have to revisit amino acids. Mm. You can think of these from your high school bio days as little Lego blocks in your body. And with human biology, there's 20 amino acids. Mm-hmm. They can build anything, anything really. You know, you think you talk big proteins, enzymes. These are all amino acid-based compounds. Mm-hmm. And peptides is just a smaller form of that. Uh, and it's made of about uh, 20 to 30 amino acids. Of course, it could be much smaller than that small. Mm-hmm. Dipeptides are just two amino acids bound together. And if you think about it, you have 20 different blocks to build from it. You can build different lengths of it. You can build different, maybe one is branching off and you have a web of it, or you can be really big, really small. It, there's an infinite possibility for peptides out there. And that's why on the skincare side, you have a few that's magical and you have some that's completely useless. <laughs> um, and yeah, so if you think about the inky names that you find on ingredient mm-hmm. list, like tetrapeptide one, tetra means four. So you might find something that's like tetrapeptide four. So you know there's four amino acids in your compound, but it doesn't tell you which four amino acids are there. Mm -hmm. There's 20 of them, and it can be any of them. And usually you'll see a number attached to it, Mm -hmm. but that number is kind of like, it's not, it doesn't specify, right? It's more like industry knowledge. You get registered, this is tetrapeptide one, cool. And that's it, the nomenclature is really loose. So that's why we don't do decodes on peptides. It's very, very hard for us to talk about because even us, unless something gets called out as a trade name or we have this insider knowledge like we do today, it's really hard for us to look at an inky name and go, this is the peptide you're using. Yep, exactly. Woo! So, you know, and knowing all of that, this is where, you know, don't worry in meet part two, we'll actually get into how to kind of apply some of this knowledge to actually shopping for a product. Um, But um, what better way and what better example to share in terms of um, just how specialized a peptide can be than talking about Soderma's matrikines. Um, So you're like, matri what? And so matrikines are just peptides. Um, They are peptides that are derived from the uh, uh, extracellular matrix. Um, And you know, what's funny is in terms of the study itself, people used to think the ECM, extracellular matrix, um, was just architecture. Um, it didn't really play a part. Um, and then they found out that um, it's actually highly involved in cell processes. And so what Soderma, the technology they use, is using peptides that are derived from the ECM in terms of, so that it can have better signaling. and in terms of signaling why this is important is because then you set off a lot of good helpful cascades um, for a lot of important cell processes still with me all in all all um, what you should be hearing is uh, peptides that help 
kick off helpful things in your skin, right? So that would probably be the most basic way of thinking about Hello, balance. FDA! <laughs> Hello, we have people here making drug Stay plays! With me. <laughs> FDA, close your ears for a moment. <laughs> but the cool thing is, because of that, um, from this technology, um, they were able to create a lot of incredibly helpful peptides. And the thing is, um, in terms of peptides, and what Gloria was kind of touching on before is, when you build all these different combinations, uh, actually a majority of them are, are dust. <laughs> yeah. um, and so why we like Sederma so much is that, um, yes, the in concept with all of the cell signaling, it sounds nice in theory, and you'll hear about all of this. We we hear so many, so many of these like mechanism stories of all sorts of actives, but we do really appreciate the validation side of all of it. Um, so, uh, as far as Sonoma goes, their matrikines, um, why they find this peptide to be so important is that it can help promote things like tissue repair, wound beep, healing, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> macromolecule synthesis, and yes, it's everything that FDA would absolutely hate to see on a package. Honestly, guys, this is why being on more upstream research is kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. um, because you get to just look at it very, very zoomed in. Yes. At the molecular level to see what it does. And of course, like it is on them to validate if it does work topically or not. And then it's up to brand owners like, oh, Steve, hmm, how do we translate it? Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, and so, yes, I, I think just to kind of go into, you know, the claim side a little bit, um, these are all things and anything that involves um, cell signaling, just talking about cells in general, you mm -hmm. will never hear about on a product and you should not hear about it um, in terms of product labeling because the FDA thinks that sounds like a drug so um but all in all uh we do i think probably one of the most famous ma matrikines or uh, matrikines that uh Sederma is well known for is matrixel and mm -hmm. you may think that it's just matrixel 3000 they actually have many in the matrixel family um that actually gloria is gonna t uh, do a little deep dive in but we're not gonna spend too much on Matrixel 3000 because here are all the links. Yeah, there are all the links that you can check out on just that specific peptide blend. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, before we dive into the different um, peptides mm -hmm. that can be found in uh, Sodermas portfolio, and I don't want to add that because matrikines they target a pathway, FDA look away, um, that means they can actually be built for very different things. So mm -hmm. you might think of um, peptides as anti-aging, but there's a lot more to it. Um, so for Sederma, what they um, what they do for their testing is it starts on the in vitro level, where you look at certain cells yeah. in a petri dish and see which pathways do they trigger, or do they not do anything at all. And from there, they do a series of tests until it gets to the clinical level. And this is where they get to be very, very creative. Yeah. Uh, what I mean by that is, I think on the brand side, usually you're formulating, you already have a clear target in mind. Like I'm making hyperpigmentation serum, I'm making anti-aging. But for them, they are developing something brand new. So they're like, I wanted to do something. I don't know what it does yet. So on the clinical side, you have to, you, you, uh, you want to look at the efficacy from a lot of different angles mm -hmm. to capture exactly what it does. For example, um, one of the matrixyl family uh, compounds is called matrixyl sin 6. Um, that's one of the sister products that came a little bit after the original matrixyl. Mm -hmm. And in, the, in their clinical study, Sederma actually did uh, a 3D imaging of um, people, real human subjects, wrinkle area at the forehead and also at the eye area. So that way, and we'll show the pictures here, that way they can use a computer program to calculate mathematically exactly how much the wrinkle depth has decreased over the time of the clinical. So that's one of the studies that they do. The other thing too is you have to understand mapping things, measurements can be very difficult to gauge by the human eye. Yeah. And so by doing some of this like almost like visualizing, it also helps make a better case of the improvement. And you know, I think one of the things to keep in mind is why we always harp on clinical measurements or clinical grading is because 
those percentages can be a lot more realistic of the improvements. Mm -hmm. Remember how we were talking about Le Domain and their um, consumer perception? You heard numbers like 98%, right? You're, you don't hear that in a lot of the clinical testing. You're going to hear numbers like 15%, you know, 30%. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a significant improvement. So just kind of like why, you know, how we kind of prioritize some of um, this validation that we all you know, the suppliers are doing. Um, yeah. Uh, another one, we, another test that is really cool and also why we put it in our double play <laughs> is a uh, haloxyl. Um, so one of the studies they did was to basically, um, they did an image analysis of the dark circle area and they were able to measure the pigment color. So this is red, blue, green, and uh, yellow. And through that was able to map kind of the decrease of red and blue pigmentation um, through their 56 day journey of using 2% whole oxal. Um, those kind of tests are very cool. And mm -hmm. it's very creative compared to probably some of the clinical testing you might hear um, with products like 56% um, reduction in fine lines and wrinkles. And Yay. in feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we'll put a picture here. It's really yeah. cool because they did a half a study mm -hmm. where one side was placebo mm -hmm. and one was with haloxyl. And you can visually see the placebo side as the darker side. So this is the type of side that we, as people who are buying raw materials, love to see. Yeah, <laughs> and drool over and want to use. Yep. Um, another very cool one that you guys probably don't think of is the lip area. Yeah, uh, they have an ingredient called Volulip. And this is, again, goes back to our whole thing about how peptides are actually incredibly diverse. Mm -hmm. And by targeting different signaling pathways, you can get it to do different things that you want it to do. Um, so Volulip, as the name suggests, Sonoma's marketing team is very, very direct. <laughs> um, <laughs> is they want to create something that kind of stimulates the lip area and make it look more plump. Which, to be fair, almost, it always sounds like foo-foo stuff. Like it just smells, it just doesn't seem very legit. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and it always, like, goes back to the story of some sort of, like, lip plumper or, like, irritation, so it looks more plump. Mm -hmm. um, but in Sonoma study, they looked at 29 female panelists, twice daily application with 1% volume lip, and they were, uh, they were able to do the same 3D imaging to show more volume coming through the lips, and the lines become less defined because of the plumpness. And they also measure lip moisturization. So just kind of tackling it at different angles. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. I actually can't even think of a brand that's still not lip clinical. Have you? That's a great question, Victoria. <laughs> uh, so any uh, lip care brands out there looking for inspo? <laughs> I think it must be really hard. It is very hard. Because I remember... Very expensive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember um, SkinCeutical has a lip AOX formula. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what's in it. But I just remember that they, because it's SkinCeuticals, they did went through like the issue of testing it. But it just, at that time, I just remember there's like... Um, they were going through testing, and they tried the formula, and I was like, I don't like the formula. <laughs> so it's really hard to like make an ingredient big validate for lip work for lip like formulas, and make sure that it all uh, it feels good at the end of the day. It's a very mysterious subject. Also, Gloria is uh, hinting on uh, subject compliancy when mm -hmm. going through some of these studies. Um, it can vary. Um, I don't know about you, but consistency of putting on a lip balm. I'm definitely not one of those. So, you know, if you think about like even moments like that, that can impact the study. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I just... range between applying eight times a day to zero. So, <laughs> yeah, compliancy is not great. Yeah. Another category that you haven't thought about is actually soothers. And you may be wondering, why do I need a peptide in the soothing category? But the right peptide can actually be quite effective. Yeah, if you think about if you think about it again, it goes back to peptides being able to target more specific pathways. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about extract soothers, usually it's they notice that they're doing something, and then they try to apply it, find the right uh, right concentration, yeah. maybe narrow it down to the right compound. But from a peptide perspective, you can hone in on a certain mechanism right away. Yeah, and you know, typically in terms of you know looking at 
you know, soothers and treating sensitive skin. This can actually be quite difficult. And this is where you have to get a little bit creative. I mean, typically what they'll do is they'll try to cause uh, irritation in the skin through using like a lactic acid patch or something. That way um, you can be able to treat it and get some sort of result. Um, but again, actually screening for sensitive skin can be very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, if you think about um, a user in terms of grading sensi sensitive skin, that's also very challenging and complex. Um, so suppliers do have to get a little creative here. Yeah, so what Sedona have opted to do is a sensorial sensitivity mm -hmm. task. They broke it down to two segments, which is the touch sensitivity and thermo sensitivity. What that means to break it all down is um, you have subjects touching different surfaces like sam really uh, really coarse sandpaper. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Subjects touch uh, a warm to hot surface yeah. uh, and then afterwards they apply a cream that has the common sensing in it, wait a little bit and repeat the same test. And all this is blinded and then they have found that after applying this cream they become less sensitive to these um, uh, this, these unpleasant textures and generally you become more tolerant. So after you use the cream, they have found the subjects perceive these um, these unpleasantries yeah. a lot less than with the, uh, than without the cream. So this is why common sensing is considered a great soother. Yeah, um, and so again, like one of you know, we really appreciate that Sederma opened their doors, allowed to peek behind the curtain, um, just to see all of the work that it takes. Um, we only share. A small window, mm -hmm. the glamorous window of how these peptides can work for our skin, can be beneficial. They actually look at categories like even in terms of hair density, you're talking about cellulite, there's all these other skin concerns and general beauty and wellness concerns that they look at. Um, so it's very cool and um, in terms of other testing, um, that's not to say they don't go through all of their safety testing as well, their in vitro screening. So um, yeah, it's, it's been fun. And hopefully that gives you an idea of generally how peptides can work. And hopefully you can see that just like any other active, it has to go through its validation, mm -hmm. but it takes a lot of work to get something that will do something. <laughs> yeah, and we know that you have a lot of questions about, mm -hmm. we, we also get these questions all the time in terms of, how do I add a peptide to my routine? Yeah. I've heard that peptides can be mixed with mm, my other actives. Yep. Is it true? So many times. We also got around to asking Sidorma all these questions. Mm -hmm. um, now note that, it, of course, it goes back to what we said before, peptides are complex. So a lot of their responses is directly for Sidorma peptides. Mm -hmm. This is not, it doesn't apply to every peptide out there. Yeah. So um, yeah, so let's dive right into it. Um, first of all, are peptides oil or water soluble? Yeah, so the cool thing is um, with a good chemist, you can make an in ingredient both oil soluble and water soluble. So two different types um, based on the formula, based on your needs. Um, so for Matrixol, for example, um, it can actually come in both formats, mm -hmm. uh, which is great in terms of diversity of how to utilize some of their peptides. So that's very cool and as chemists, Muy bueno. <laughs> uh, another thing that a lot of you guys will ask is stability. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, it's a big question. <laughs> yeah, I think we've heard the gamut of like things that people will do to help preserve their peptides. Like we, put them in a fridge yeah. or buy a fridge just for your peptides. Bury it under the ground and dig it up when you're ready to use it. Um, <laughs> put it in a clay pot like kimchi. <laughs> <laughs> so Derma has said that their peptides are all considered to be very robust. Mm. They are not very concerned with the stability at all. Mm. Um, as a general rule of thumb though, because it's very hard for you to know which peptides your products are using, mm -hmm. um, keep it at a relatively cool temperature. Room temperature should be okay. Yes. Fridge is depending on the product you can put in the fridge if you want, but room temperature should be fine. Mm -hmm. And when in doubt, don't mix it with your really, really low pH products um, because um, peptides, amino acid proteins in general, um, the morphology or the shape of the molecule is very important. At low pHs, sometimes that can change. Again, it depends on the peptide, but generally speaking, you probably wouldn't want to mix a peptide with your chemical peels. 
Yeah. And I, I was just going to add, like, you might be wondering how low that is. You know, general, um, let's say you're, I, we would say anything that's like a high level acid, you might get at an esthetician office. You know, like yeah. that low of a pH is generally what we're more worried about here. Um, the cool thing is, Sederma has confirmed that if you are using any of their matrixyl peptides, that they actually they are compatible with acids, vitamin C, retinol, your AHA. So that's some great peace of mind. But again, it's just to showcase how it depends on the peptide, which is kind of helpful. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, this wraps up me part one. In yeah. me part two, we'll go more into how to shop for a peptide which is another loaded question yeah but we're gonna take a break 